For my money, I think the question that most Catholics get asked about Mary is this. Why do you Catholics venerate Mary? Or actually, it's usually, why do you worship Mary, right? Uh, why do you pray to her and ask her to intercede for you? Why do you sing hymns of praise to her? I mean, aren't you making her equal to God? Why all the veneration? Isn't it just idolatry to do these things? Um, I think that's the most common objection to Catholic faith and practice regarding Mary. And for my money, the most important way to answer that question is really to focus on the identity of Mary as Queen Mother in the Bible. Okay, so that's what we're going to do in this session. But as always, we want to start with Jesus and make sure we understand who He is before we turn to who Mary is. So in this case, uh, I'd like to begin with a quote from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 31 to 32. This is the angel's words to Mary, angel Gabriel, at the Annunciation. And I just want to highlight something that Gabriel says. He says this to Mary, quote, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. Now, last session, we were looking at Jesus as the Davidic Messiah. But here, I want to focus a little bit more on this identity that he has as the one who is heir to the throne. Because this has manifold implications for who Mary is in a first century Jewish context. Why? Well, because any first century Jew would have known that if Jesus is the king who's going to be seated on a throne, then that means that there also has to be a queen. Right? This is very important. Right? Just like new Adam and new Eve. If he's the new Adam, who's the new Eve? Mary. Well, if he's the new Davidic king, who's the new Davidic queen? 